Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Frozen Crown War Hearts, our October 18th on Napalm Records. The album has 10 tracks, 42 minutes in length, and this is the band's fifth full length studio album. They are an Italian power metal band. When it comes to the design of this record, the album gives you this impression that it's very linear, that things don't change, the album stays constant from the first all the way to the last track. But when you uh, move the veil and you can see beyond it and you look at how these songs are put together, there are a lot of uniquenesses within the tracks. It's just that the size of the songs uh, kind of uh, overshadows the uniquenesses that the tracks have underneath it all. And that is what makes this album feel a lot more linear than what it is. So the design of the record uh, doesn't represent itself properly in the way the album comes across to the listener when you navigate from the first all the way to the last track. As far as the sound is concerned, I mentioned already this is a big sounding record and I think that is the main ingredient that every single listener is going to walk away with. This is their biggest sounding record to date. It's perhaps their most textured, their most elaborate sounding album that they've ever done. The band has increased, they brought more talent in, and this album showcases all of the talent that they had and all of the talent that they have. And that is where this bigger than life sound approach comes from. Because they're a band that has a lot of old school elements, but they also have a lot more modern power metal elements. And this album merges the two. It merges some of the old school ways of constructing songs, of approaching solos, of putting tracks together, uh, of even having a specific DNA to their sound, to their essence, the galloping riffs that they have. A lot of these elements are, are really old school elements, focusing on the guitar sound, having the guitars as one of the pillars. And then you have the more modern touch with, with, uh, with the slight orchestrations built within the songs. You have the more modern approach as far as the production is concerned that, that levitates the tracks a little bit, that thins out the tracks, that almost makes them slightly symphonic at times. It, because all of that also helps with the size of the tracks and it makes them feel bigger and it gives them that sort of impact, that sort of footprint. The problem with an album that sounds like this is that you have to have something robust on the other end to make the album not just sound big, but to have volume and substance within it. At times I felt like this record was a little too light. It didn't have enough grounding and that's where the drums perhaps should have came in. The drums felt too light for me for an album like this in order for that size to not feel empty, to not feel thin, to, to, to not feel like it didn't have uh, enough behind it. The drums could have really helped this record have the right volume, the right substance to be powerful, to have a lot more power in the word power metal so that this album could hit a lot harder. The way that they went with the production and with the approach allowed the guitars to be in the forefront, it allowed the guitars to shine. Great guitar work throughout the entire record. The album has incredible guitar sound, incredible execution, it's an absolute clinic from top to bottom. When you look at the melodies, when you look at the harmonies, when you look at, at the solos, the solos on this album are out of this world. So incredible guitar sound and the guitars do help create some, some thickness. They do help create some volume, some substance, but it's not enough for how big the overall sound and presence and impact of this album is. But phenomenal guitar sound that definitely becomes the cornerstone of the overall soundscape. Now once you get into the vocals, the vocals in my opinion for Frozen Ground have always been a cornerstone, they've always been a pillar. The guitars as well, but now the guitars are even more defined as a pillar. Having three guitarists on the band gives them a completely different dynamic, it gives them completely different tools, they're able to do things that they weren't able to do before, not just because you have three, but because you have extremely talented three guitar players. And then you have the vocals on top of that. I felt like the vocals on this album, for the size of the tracks, they hit home. The vocal performance um, matched the energy and the size of the songs themselves. They didn't feel underwhelmed by everything around them. And that's something really important because 
when you go from creating songs that are driven, that have power, that have thickness, but are perhaps a little bit more narrow, into songs that have a lot more texture, that are a lot more technical, that are a lot richer, and they have a massive amount of size, it's very easy to lose yourself, as far as the vocals are concerned, within everything that is happening. This album didn't allow that to come through. The vocals really felt connected with the songs, with the size of the songs, representing them perfectly, and giving great life and great energy to the overall record. It is without a shadow of a doubt their biggest sounding record, I think it's their most technical record, most textured record, perhaps even the richest record. I just wish that the overall sound had something more in it, a little bit more substance like I said, a little bit more thickness, a little bit more power, so that the album would be not just big, but, but would be big and hitting you hard with it. That's where I felt the, the album falls slightly short. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I want to start off with To Live To Die. It's a great song, it has a fast pace to it, super driven with a great melody. Uh, the vocals really help create some sort of dynamics within the track, create some movement within the track. But the guitar sound uh, combined with the vocals, it's really what sells this song. Um, the vocals in the chorus are phenomenal. One of my favorite choruses on the record because of the way the vocals hit, uh, really bring the song home and they elevate the track giving it even a little bit bigger size and then you have the guitars on the other hand from a sonic perspective galloping fast in those verses uh, the drums helping the guitars galloping fast in those verses and then a solo section that's absolutely bonkers incredible solo section if, if you look at this song if you had to listen to one song from the album you listen to this song this is a representation of what the record is all about great vocals, outstanding vocals, out of this world guitar playing with solos, harmonies, melodies, just phenomenal guitar playing and a track that has a great chorus that knows how to deliver a chorus and makes itself feel very dynamic, very fluid, but very intense at the exact same time. Next we have On Silver Wings. Um, this one has a, a different way of, of moving. Uh, this is a track that feels a little bit more epic uh, in the sound and in the melodies that it has and then even in the vocal experience it just comes across as almost like an epic metal song it has a lot of that that fantasy world built in into this track uh, into the way it sounds into the way it feels into the way the the vocals come across the chorus in the verses have a very similar experience to one another so the track feels a little bit more leveled when it comes to that perspective but at the same time there is a sense of soaring there is a sense of movement it's just that what's moving uh is very light so what stays behind it keeps the, the song slightly more grounded so it's a very interesting track it has a reset at the end of each each chorus so as the verse starts it goes back exactly to the way the last verse was and then you have this this almost linear experience with with another layer on top that moves exponentially upwards really interesting design uh, interesting delivery like I said a very all-around epic track last but definitely not least bloodlines uh, bloodlines is a song that has a little bit of a darker undertone it's not a dark sounding song but it has a dark undertone, specifically in the verses. And the keys really help emphasize that slightly dark undertone that the verses have. It's still a very fluid song, still a very driven song. It has incredible guitar playing throughout the entire track. The chorus is hooky, it's more complex. So for, for a chorus that's more complex, both musically and vocally, it's very memorable. The complexity of the chorus is perhaps what makes it memorable instead of having a one-liner that just stays with you. Now, it's a great track because of these elements, of these uniquenesses that the songs offer, and it's definitely a song that uh, has a little bit more brightness uh, at times in it, specifically in the chorus, there's a little bit more brightness in it. But the underlying darkness that the verses offer also helps give this song that same sense of uniqueness as the way the chorus is designed. This is it, Frozen Crown, War Hearts, out October 18th on Apalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Hit me up in the comment section. I'll see you all at the next video. Take care, guys.